everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I am working on canning grape juice concentrate. I was out to my orchard a day or two ago and I picked a half bushel each of purple Concord grapes and these white grapes. They make great juice, they make great jelly, but to get to jelly you gotta start with juice. Now a good way to do this is to can them up into quarts. Um, you add water to it just like you would frozen juice from the store, only it's no ingredients. You are doing just juice and canning it up um, with a little bit of water to compensate um, for the solids that are in the pot. So the first thing you have to do is de-stem these. Now we've got um, beautiful clusters of grapes and um, I'm actually starting with my purple grapes or my Concord grapes and I just remembered that as we picked the green ones there's a few purple ones in here so I gotta go through here and pull those out as well. Let's go over to the stove and I will show you what I've gotten so far. So I set myself up with a, a good hard um, heavy bottomed pot. I have lighter weight pots and you will scorch um, your filling anything that's in that pot so I uh, highly recommend investing in a heavy pot. I picked this up at Target. It's 22 quarts. It's about the same size as a water bath canner, so it works really good. I started with just washing my grapes in the sink this morning. So I filled one side with water, give them a good swish, put them on the opposite side and let them drain. Then I put them in my canner pot and got them all like mostly dry. Set myself up in the living room pour peeled out and then I picked out all of my unripe or green grapes now I could let these set and ripen and try to get more but I think I'm just going to give them to the chickens because coming back to this in a couple days I may end up with a bunch of fruit flies um, which I'm already getting in the house and they are clustering around my green grapes so I want to do both batches today if possible we're going to cook this down now a 22 quart pot equals about five and a half gallons of fruit. I'm doing the Ball Blue Book of Canning Grape Juice Concentrate or Grape Juice Recipe. And the recipe is one cup of water per one gallon of fruit. So I've got about five and a half, maybe five gallons of fruit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in about five cups of water and then we're gonna put this on the heat. Now you can see I've gone through and I've de-stemmed them. Occasionally you get a little stem like that. That's okay, that's gonna all get filtered out in the process. So we're gonna get this warmed up with water. It is going to get those um, skins off and get the inner part released. Now you see I got some green here, that's the inside. Occasionally you'd have a skin slip during the process, that's no problem. Um, you just don't want them sitting like that for too long because any broken skins are going to attract uh, fruit flies. So uh, a good recommendation to you is to wash these as soon as you bring them in the house. I had actually forgotten about that because we were doing peaches and cider. So I've been dealing with a little bit of outside um, ants and I even saw a few earwigs here and there. So keep that in mind. Give them a good uh, spray off with the hose before doing that. So you can see I've been getting my water bath can ready, my jars ready, my lids and fans are getting ready, and I've got my water and my grapes combined here. It's recommended to mash them um, up a little bit to help rele release the juice. And when they're cold or just room temperature, it can be a little bit hard to do. But if you don't help press out some of that juice, you may be leaving some behind. Uh, as the, it heats, it's easier to do. So I've just got this long handled uh, potato masher. I really don't recommend doing like a potato uh, ricer. I've seen people do it that way. That releases a lot of uh, tannins in the skin. 
and tartaric acid actually comes from grapes that settles in the bottom of your jars and can cause crystals. So aesthetically, those solid crystals don't look great. They won't do anything to you, but they just don't um, reconstitute into anything. Now, the ball canning book does suggest uh, doing this process, straining it out and letting it sit in the refrigerator for 24 hours. In the grand scheme of things, that's kind of ridiculous. I have a refrigerator full of milk, yogurt, and cheese. And then regular groceries on top of that. So you can see as I'm doing this, already just in a couple of minutes, I am getting more skins broken off and more juice releasing. Now, I want to do this right up until uh, it boils. And a couple minutes past that. Just making sure that your pot stays wet, that you're not letting it stick on the bottom. And use a heavy metal spoon if you have to, um, to keep stirring it. But so far, this is keeping it at a medium temperature, just kind of going along. So I'm going to go get some more of my canning stuff ready. I always like to have my jar lifter, my magnetic wand, a towel on the counter, everything I need for the canning process. Um, I also have to grab my food mill and get that cleaned and ready because I am going to actually run this through the food mill to help remove the skins. And I'm going to be running this juice through cheesecloth also. And then we'll reheat it and bottle it. Okay, so I've let this go for just a little while longer, and you can see the level of my pot is raising up. That means that that juice is releasing. Now, the Ball Blue Book of Canning recipe says to only heat this to 190 degrees, not to a rolling boil. Most recipes or most um, people online doing home canning say to bring it up to a boil. Um, it's doing two things. You're uh, making sure that it is nice and hot before... Um, straining it and releasing things but in the case that maybe there might be a little small insect hidden in there or whatever um, any contamination to your fruit anything like that um, is going to be heated up to uh, a high temperature to be able to make sure that everything is healthy and safe sanitary you know we're not disinfecting anything um, but we will be making sure that we are going into sterile jars and using clean fruit. Um, you don't want to be using fruit that's all soiled with, you know, bird poop or anything like that. So that's why you are um, cleaning everything as you're going. So I have this nice big candy thermometer and we're going to see what temperature we're at here. Um, you can see I'm at medium heat and we're not up to a boil. I started washing these grapes at about seven this morning and I just gave them like I said a quick rinse from one side of the sink put them in an empty uh, tub on the other side of the sink and just let that water drip off for a while before moving it to a pot for picking so I'm at about a hundred and almost 140 right now so we'll give that a few more minutes I'm just washing up the morning dishes while this is going take this opportunity to get yourself fed get the kids fed and clean up your kitchen. So if you like, a slotted spoon or a big handled strainer like this works really well. I picked up this strainer like on clearance at Meyer, um, big local grocery store, at uh, canning time a couple of years ago and it has worked out really good. However, this little metal handle part stops here. So it does okay. Um, just keep your eye out for deals whenever you can. Yeah. So you can see, I decided it might be better to switch to a stock pot. Uh, this is a gallon more than my bucket that I had. Now I have to set the camera down, but the idea is, is that you crank the food mill and the paddles are pushing this through. And if you reverse it, it kind of works like a plow. It moves that out of the way and lets the juice through. But you can hear my juice is already just naturally coming through. We're just help pressing it some more. So just to show you just that couple of scoops and one run through the food mill, how quickly that cheesecloth starts getting filled full of pulp. 
and that's why you want to do this straining process. Uh, you don't want chunks in your jelly, you don't want chunks in your juice, and if you are doing jelly, you just skip this uh, canning process for the juice and just go straight into your jelly recipe. Okay, so here's our juice all run through the food mill, and you can see that sediment in there, and that's why the Blue Book recommends just stopping at this point and running it um, through the refrigerator to let that settle. I say no. I say let's speed this up and run it through cheesecloth. So this is everything that I pulled out, and you can see there's some juice in there, but it's not so much that you really have to worry about. Some people like to fill a bag and just let that hang and drip. That is an option. Now, as you can see, this does stain uh, your nails and your hands. Um, so whether you want to go that far or not is up to you. I would recommend wearing gloves if the acidity bothers you or you just don't want to wreck your hands. So here I've got a new cheesecloth, and this is a wider mesh. And I didn't double it over like I did um, on my actual cheesecloth. It's a tighter weave because it's actually made for cheese. Um, where this is more like for jelly making. So I'm going to run my juice through here and then we'll reheat it for canning. So you can see even though it's been strained, it starts getting slow. And with that wider cheesecloth, only one layer, it starts getting much slower. Adding more isn't going to help. Pushing it through isn't going to help. So I'm just going to take a break and let this sit. Um, processing time so far, I think the food mill in this is probably 40 minutes. The running it through the field, food mill didn't take that long. It's this filtering. So then I went ahead and I added all of my pulp that was through the food mill just on another pot. And we'll just go ahead and try to scavenge that. I'm just going to cover it up, do a little bit of housework and come back to it. Okay. So the best way I have found to fill my jars is by dipping a large, heavy, measuring cup. This is a four cup Pyrex measuring cup. Any brand, any kind you want. I don't recommend plastic because of the heat. Using my jar funnel, I'm filling my jars. Now, if you wanted to, like I said before, add sugar to this reheating point. I added my honey, brought it back up to uh, 190 degrees. And the reason that is so handy, see that? And if you caught a glimpse of that in the background, these canning days get crazy busy because I've still got to feed a family of seven. And we're moving into dinner time. So we did some housework, ran a quick errand while this was straining, came back, gave the pulp to the chickens, so the evening farm chores are mostly done. I have to go back out at sunset and work on uh, milking the cow. Now if you've got somebody in your family that is watching sugar, this is a perfect time to leave it out. Looks like we might get seven. It is amazing how much work goes into getting seven quarts of anything. Yesterday it was seven quarts of peaches and I had about three cups left over and we had a beautiful peach cobbler. It was a very satisfying night of enjoying that, seeing the canning sitting there cooling down and still looking at it this morning before I went to the pantry. And you can see that's not going to wash out. Use old towels. I was just fine with my clothes the whole time. And I came back from running errands. So I had on some of my better clothes that weren't farm clothes. I fed the chickens and that grape pulp splattered on my shirt because they were so excited to get it. So... Now with most of these juices, um, a lot of people say half inch head space. I found with my juice for my peaches yesterday, if I went under an inch, 
I had uh, seepage in my canner. So, you know, it gets hot and it gets boiling in there. So, I think an inch ahead space is pretty good. All right, I'm going to top these off and then we will clean off the tops, either boiling water or vinegar with a rag, and then put on our hot lids and bands. So you can see, you just set your band on top of your lid, give it a twist. I'll make sure that that is finger tight, just a little extra gentle tug. Before I put it in the canner, I always wipe off my jars before I do that. Um, I ended up with seven quarts and one wide mouth pint. The wide mouth pints always hold just a little bit more. And if you notice about these jars, I have a huge variety of jars. This is an old Kerr jar. Um, I've got Ball Perfect uh, mason jars. I've got new Ball mason jars. Each one holds a slightly different amount. So factor that in. I don't think it ever comes out perfectly seven. So the kids can have some grape juice with their pizza tonight. We'll just reconstitute that into a uh, two quart container. And you can see I'm just using that magnetic wand to pick it up out of the hot water. You can use tongs. Oh, I had an extra one. Okay. And these jars are hot and the liquid is hot. So my water bath, so my water bath is hot also, but it's not boiling. I'm trying to kind of keep that temperature equal. So a tip for loading your canner is raise this uh, basket up so that you can load the sides. And these jars are putting their weight on this rim right here. This rim doesn't go all the way around. That way it will not rock and stay steady for you while you are loading the rest of your canner. And it's really hard to try to load the back of the canner for me because I don't have a lot of clearance here with the microwave. I did not design this kitchen. So when I added my microwave from the old microwave, it came down lower because I have those soffits up above. If I built my kitchen, I'm almost six feet tall, I would not have a soffit. I would have taller cabinets. All right. With using older jars, I do recommend doing a test fit of your jars because some of the bigger, um, more square type jars won't fit seven in here very well without them rubbing each other. And a lot of times if I have a mixture, I'll put the big um, ones on the outside with a newer one that's more narrow on the inside, more round, if that makes sense. And you can see here, I've got my ball lids, I've got my pure lids, they're all going in the same container. Occasionally I've seen a slight difference with the pure lids when I pull them out. So if I see that, I'll point that out at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and lower this down and put the lid on to bring it up to a boil before we set our timer. Now also, you wanna make sure that your jars have at least an inch of hot water over the top. If it's less, go ahead and add more hot water so I always reserve my pot from my lids and bands so that if I have to add more to it, I can. Because if you take warm tap water or cool tap water and pour that over there, you're going to shock the jars. And what happens is the bottom just snaps out in a ring most of the time. Sometimes the top does. And you'll just find floaters um, at the end. And that will really make a mess with juice. Now I just want to show what I was talking about before and I said I would camera it uh, or film it if it happened and this pops up like this. This is one of the pure brands that was heavier and this is the ball brand. Now it's just sitting normal. Here's another pure one. They seem to bulge up and it worries me about seals. I haven't had one not seal yet. Um, there's two, three other pure ones and they're fine. But these two right here, it's like, almost looks bent. But in the past, when I pulled them out, they've cooled and they've been fine. So this was time for 15 minutes. It's time to pull these out and let them cool. 
So here are my seven beautiful jars of concentrated grape juice. Here's the unheated one. You can see how nice that is. It's so thick. I don't recommend squeezing that bag. Like I said before about getting sediment in your juice, trying to keep it as clear as possible. If you wanted to make really beautiful clear juice, you would probably want to filter this one or two more times for jelly. I think it's just fine the way it is. The kids are getting lots of nutrients um, out of it in drinking it as it is. It's going to be wonderful juice. Now I just want to give a little word of encouragement. Sometimes this canning stuff can go fast, sometimes it can go slow. Now I did have to stop for an hour today to do um, errands to town and take care of some chickens, but it was always when something was straining or something was warming up. I washed my grapes at 7 o'clock this morning. It is right now 7, 10 p.m. So this has just been a steady thing all day long that I just worked at. The slowest part is picking these off of the bundles um, and getting them going. Getting that fruit going through the food mill, that wasn't too bad, but then straining it, it goes slow. And if you force it, it's just not gonna be clear or it's um, gonna stop up your filtering system. So do it how you like. You could just skip the filtering entirely if you wanted. It's, in, it's totally up to you. Chef's choice, right? So you can do it, it can be great, and you could fill your pantry all with things from your own backyard. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.